The Buddha says there are two reactions to pain. One is bewilderment. Why is there this pain? Why is there this suffering? And two, a search. As he phrases the search, it's just someone who knows a way or two to put an end to this pain. Just think of that. You're looking for someone who has knowledge, who is truthful, and who has the compassion to tell you how to put an end to pain. But at the same time, you're bewildered. You're not sure who has that knowledge, who has the compassion, who has the truthfulness. And sometimes it's hard to tell. This is the position we're in as we look for a teacher. The question often comes up, if I'm going to find a teacher, what do I look for? Remind yourself of the position you're in and exactly what you are looking for. You have to be very observant. As the Buddha said, you're not going to know someone until you've been with them for a while. You're not going to know their virtue, i.e. their truthfulness, until you've been with them for a while, seen them in action. And you have to be observant. This requires that you be honest, too. You're not going to know a person's discernment until you hear them discuss issues and see how they treat a particular issue, how they treat different questions, which questions need to be answered, which questions need to be reanalyzed. Which questions need to have a counter-question, clear things up before the answer comes? Which questions deserve being put aside? That list of the four types of questions, the Buddha says, is really an essential part of discernment. You're not going to know a person's endurance until you've seen that person endure hardship. And again, you have to be observant, spend some time. And you're not going to know the person's purity unless you've had dealings with that person. The sutta doesn't define what dealings are, or what dealings are meant in this context. But two things come to mind. One is simply trade, making exchanges. And the other is getting into arguments. If you have a debate with someone, you've got to sense pretty quickly whether they're fair in how they treat your position how they treat your arguments, how they treat you as a person. So it takes time to know people. But the Buddha does give you a list of things to look for specifically in a teacher. And again, it comes down to the issue of someone who is knowledgeable, truthful, and compassionate. One of the questions he has you ask is, would this person ever claim to know something that he or she doesn't know? That gives you a sense of the truthfulness of the person. When the person teaches, do the teachings clear things up? The Buddha says he trained his students to be experts in cross-questioning. In other words, when a teacher gave a teaching, and if the student didn't understand what the teacher was saying, the student was free to ask, what does this word mean? What does that word mean? In the same way, the teacher was supposed to be free to question the student. When the student asks a question, the teacher can ask, what do you mean? What are you getting at? This kind of relationship, the Buddha says, is conducive to the truth. What you don't want is someone who is good in bombast, someone who can spin fine phrases, sound impressive. But when you press the person on what they exactly mean, they equivocate. They don't make things clear. Think about that story of Marilyn Monroe when she went through her period of she was married to a playwright. 
and she was getting to know the different intellectuals in New York. She had lunch with one famous intellectual one time, and afterwards she said, he's not an intellectual, he doesn't make things clear to me. You want someone who makes things clear. That gives a sense that the person really knows what he or she is talking about. As for compassion, ask yourself, would this person tell someone else to do something that was not in their best interest? Watch. Be observant. Don't go by the impression you get simply by listening to a few Dharma talks on YouTube. Although one thing you can learn is if you go into a chat room and there's a teacher involved in a chat room, notice how the teacher handles arguments. That would give you a sense of how he or she deals with people. But otherwise, you have to know the person in person. You have to have time to get a sense of whether there can be a rapport based on compassion. I know in my case with the John Fu, there are a lot of things he didn't know about Western culture, and there were times when I would ask him questions that to me seemed very natural. But as soon as the question came out of my mouth and I got this quizzical look from him, it made me realize okay, this is something that, that really was very much an American question. And I was going to work it out on my own. But the sense of compassion that I felt from him was much more important than having him answer all my questions. He really did seem to be concerned about my well-being, which meant that there were times when he was harsh. I would be doing something that was lazy or stupid, thoughtless, and he would let me know. I'm glad he let me know. One of my jobs was to be his attendant and going up the hill every day. If there was a question I had, either about my practice or about some issue in the monastery, I realized I had to practice it in my head before I broached the topic with him. Because there were times when I would broach a topic and he would come right back in a way that indicated that the conversation was already over before it had even begun. I came to realize it was the way I broached the topic. And so I had to think very carefully, how do you broach a topic in a way that you're not putting any burdens on him, not placing responsibility on him for something that you should be responsible for yourself. Then years later, after he died, I had dealings with other senior monks, and I noticed other monks who had not been trained in this way, getting themselves into a lot of trouble. Whereas I was in a position to think things through, I'd had that practice. And I'd have dealings with monks, senior monks, that were said to be difficult, and I didn't have any difficulties with them. So you're not looking for someone who's simply kind, in a sweet, flowery sort of way. The kindness has to run deeper. You're looking for someone who's willing to train you. And that takes a lot of effort on their part, so you have to have some compassion for the teacher. But if you feel the teacher is compassionate, the teacher has your true well-being in mind, that's a lot of it right there. So you're looking for someone who is truthful, compassionate, knowledgeable. Learn to ask the right questions. So you can overcome some of your bewilderment and actually see who is truthful and knowledgeable, compassionate. As the Buddha said, a person of no integrity or little integrity cannot recognize a person of integrity. Cannot recognize a person of no integrity. It's hard to see. So you have to look to your integrity as the number one issue. But if you honestly want to put an end to suffering, and you're willing to do whatever is needed to put an end to suffering, that puts you on the right track. 
And when you're on the right track, you're in a much better position to find people who can help you along the way.